Well, you know, it was a volatile night on bond markets alongside. Let's go to Jonathan Sheridan for you at FIG. Welcome into the show. Uh, net, net, more dovish, right? The statement, but perhaps no surprise in light of all the global events, which did find their way in as well to the statement. Good afternoon, Carson. Yeah, you're right. I think, from my read anyway, at least, it, w it was an overall bit more dovish statement than expected with the, with the addition of the consideration of the global events. And yet we saw the equity market sell off and we saw bonds rally after the statement was published. So obviously the market took that to be, to be the opposite, which I found a little bit surprising mm -hmm. because, you know, if, you, if you've spent a year saying that you're going to raise rates, then, you know, it, it doesn't just take one one month for you to turn around on that view mm. uh, and when you put in you know things that you've not put in before about global markets and weakness and so mm. on then I think that's a bit dubby. And what was equally bizarro was that economists, learned economists are still pointing to those four hikes this year. Uh, the likes of Westpac indeed even saying we will see uh, at least one before the end of the first half. Yeah, I, I look. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to comment on it, on other people's forecasts and so on. I try not to give those kind of forecasts myself. But um, the market's definitely not pricing in four hikes this year. It's more like sort of one and a half. Um, I think that the point that uh, one of those commentators made about they need to look at the data and it's probably going to take longer than, than two or three months for them to get a, a clearer picture. Uh, I think that's very valid. And you know, you. you you don't want to run the risk of going too early. I think they're very aware of that, um, that the economic recovery is still fragile. Um, we're looking at a potential GDP number of uh, less than one for the US economy when they come out in the next few days. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that really just doesn't give you any case to raise rates in the short term. Let's talk about the issuance locally and the spread and the doubling of it since last year. So banks are uh, coming to the table uh, or at least uh, with, with their own issuance but it really is it's only looking at less attractive than, than it might have a year ago absolutely mm. from the issuers perspective yeah. i mean january has been the worst year uh, the worst sorry the worst january for about six or seven years in terms of primary issuance uh, mm. we, we've only had and this sounds like a, a big number but we've only had about 300 billion of issuance uh, in january uh, so far which is as i said the worst year for about six years and that really kind of puts a lid on the bank's funding program so you know they need to get these things done because they've got other bonds rolling off so we have saw what cba do uh, a one and a quarter billion euro covered bond uh, which is the highest place in their capital structure so AAA rated and last year when they issued bonds they paid a spread of 17 basis points and and this one that re they recently did they paid 35 basis points so you know from 0.17 to 0.35 percent may not sound a lot but when you're doing you know half a billion euros uh, that's a, that's a, a decent amount of money to come off your P&L. Anything else that you're uh, watching with avidly in terms of even data pending? Uh, I don't think there'll be any surprises really. Like I said, we're looking at a, a low US GDP number. I think that's the big one that we'll be looking at coming up. Uh, that obviously supports lower, longer bond rates. And, um, you know, we've been on that sort of lower for longer theme for a while here. Um, but we also do actually like inflation trades at the moment. You know, inflation is pretty benign at the moment, but history tells us that you need to get in early on, the, on that score because, you know, it'll come and, and bite you in the bum before you know it. Mm. And that will be something that you would not wish to submit to. Thank you so much, <laughs> Jonathan. Thanks, Carson. Jonathan Sheridan, live from Fig.